I've got one that can see. Logic before authority. Hi guys, this is Daniel Alexander Cannon here on Logic Before Authority. I'm back with uh, some more true stories. Uh, this is going to be a couple of more I should be dead true stories. And there's a purpose to telling true stories about how you should be dead and you're not. There's a meaning behind it. I'll let you determine what that meaning is. Okay, our first stop today is, uh, let's go with this one. We've got two we're going to do today. Yeah, I should have been dead quite a few times. So, this was in Kentucky. I was about 21 years old. I was in the military, the U.S. Army, which I served uh, four years, uh, of which I'm not proud. And... You should understand why that is, because I was living a dream, living a lie, and uh, yeah, that's another whole story. That could be a video of its own. So, I was in Kentucky. Kentucky is uh, uh, fairly rolling hillish and got some mountains and stuff. Um, this was at uh, near Fort Knox, Kentucky. Okay, because I was that's the base I was on was Fort Knox. I was there about a year, and uh, I was living off base, and I was hanging out one night with a group of people, and there was three guys, and we decided to go for a ride, and no, we weren't drinking in this story, um, and. If we were, it wasn't more than maybe a beer, and I don't even think it was any, okay? So, uh, from my recollection, there was no, no alcohol involved, so or, or no anything involved, no uh, smoke or anything like that either. So, because back in the day, most of us did uh, smoke a little something, if you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, so, Kentucky, it's about 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Uh, definitely into the evening and it's dark, completely dark. And me and the other three guys, two guys in the back seat and one in the front seat with me and I'm driving and we're heading down this road, this road here. Okay. And, uh, it was a, uh, a, a Bonneville. Um, it, uh, it was back when they actually made the Bonneville. It was pretty cool. Uh, it was, uh, I can't remember the engine it had in it, but I do remember it had a full barrel on it. So when you would get on it, it would do that whoop sound that some of you guys, if you're old enough, you're familiar with. And, uh, although I wasn't driving it like that this night, I really was just, we were just riding and we were probably doing from my recollection, probably about 50 miles an hour, maybe 55. Um, we weren't speed and joy riding or anything like that. We were just riding Riding and talking, you know. And we were on a country back road, country road, okay. And this over here was representing kind of like a field, you know, a farmer's field on this left side. And on this side, there were some bushes and trees and stuff. And there was a lot more trees out in the distance. I just didn't take the time to draw them in here. The main focus is that this road is going along and... Well, it turns exactly 90 degrees to the right and goes this way. And I had never been on this road before, and it was nighttime, and we were talking, and, well, uh, nobody was paying very good attention, even the driver, which was me. And we're coming along here, like I said, about 50, 55 miles an hour, and nobody really seen any sign leading up to this turn saying that this was a 90 degree turn that you need to slow down to about, you know, 20 mile an hour, maybe 25. And it just still blows my mind to this day. And this next story is even more mind blowing, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. We're driving along here and 
all of a sudden out the corner of my eye, I see that the road turns to the right and there is no straight ahead. Okay. The only thing there is, the only thing there is, is, well, turn to the right. And by the time I noticed that, I did not even have time really to hit the brakes. It was more like I got to turn now or I'm going in the woods. Okay. And so that's what I did. I remember turning literally a fraction of a second, remembering turning the wheel to go and try to make this turn, which was completely impossible. There was no way to make this turn at this speed. Uh, at best, I would have ran off out into here, into the bushes and trees and stuff that was out here. But the other three guys basically kind of noticed it at the very last second, kind of like I did, that the road was going this way, and we were not. But we hit it, and I whipped the wheel, and right at that moment, I don't remember anything else until we were on the road going this way. Somehow, through the grace of God, our Father in Heaven, somehow this car made it around this turn and stayed on the road going the right direction. And as we're driving off down through here, I'm asking them, how did we get around that turn? And we stopped and turned around and came back and come here and looked. But nobody in the car could remember how we got around the turn. They couldn't even remember going around the turn. One of the guys said he remembered seeing that the road was turning. And one of the guys like said he seen me turn. But from here, about here, to here, we didn't, nobody had any memory of it. It was like time stopped or something like that. And then here we were, poop, right back on the road driving. And everything's fine. There's no skid marks. We didn't run off the road. It's like, how can you explain that if there is not something supernatural going on okay an intervention because if you've watched my first video in this series you'll know that this is not the first time this happened to me you know this is it happened to me a couple of times back when i was a kid like the drag racing incident or the running off the road and hitting the railing that keeps me from going into the to the lake when I was coming home from prom. So it's just something that's, and I, I imagine that this has happened to some of y'all guys. So feel free to leave your stories down below for other people to read and, and gain, gain knowledge of what can happen, especially if, um, See, my whole life I've recognized God and I've recognized Christ and accepted them as being real. Although later in my life, as in the last 10 years, I've very much more so embraced it and, you know, faith. But even back then I had a level of faith. But it is said that all you need is the, the faith the size of a mustard seed. And you can move mountains. Or you can go around curves that you shouldn't be able to go around and not wreck. Just unbelievable that these things can happen, right? Okay, let's move on to the swamp incident. Yeah, the swamp incident. Because this one is even more, well, unbelievable even though it is absolutely true. And I gain nothing out of sitting here uh, making up stuff. You know, this channel's not monetized. And um, 
So anyways, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you exactly what happened. Okay, this was uh, many years later. This was back in South Carolina. Everything's all pretty much nice and flat down here, except if you go up in the mountains on the western side of South Carolina. But this was down somewhat near the coast. And this is a, kind of like a swamp uh, stream. Okay? A swamp stream and a road with a bridge that's a flat bridge. You really you don't go up to go over it. You just kind of go right straight through. The road is raised above the swampy area that's around you. It's why they call it the highway, right? Because it's the highway through wherever you're going. And it's late at night. Um, it was probably, I say late. It was probably around uh, 11 o'clock at night or something like this. And I was driving home. And I fell asleep. Well, when I f as I'm coming along here, okay, let me give you a little bit of size description here. Let's say the bridge itself is about 150 to 200 feet long, okay? So from like here to here, down here, say it's 150 to 200 feet maybe, something like that, okay? Not that far, okay? Um say if you're driving a truck and the truck's 15 feet long, uh, then it's not that long compared to the length of the truck, even though it's multiples of the truck size. But anyways, it gives you a little bit of size to go off of there, right? So I'm coming along. I'm probably doing 45 to 50, okay? And... I knew I was getting sleepy, but I decided, well, I was real, I was close to home. I was very close to where I was living at, at the time. Um, and right about here, I ran off the road. Okay. Let me change this color so I can draw a little bit better. Okay. Right about here, I ran off the road. Let me change this to this and see if that works better for this, what we're doing. And my path that I took was down through here. Let me click this size up a little bit. So my path came off the road and went down through here across the swamp, across the water, and then back on the road. Okay. There was a light pole right here. Very close to where the bridge started. Okay. And when I went off the road, I mean, this is, a, you say, well, why don't you just tell the story and quit hesitating? It's because it is, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's just an unbelievable thing that happened. I went off the road and I woke up right as I went off the road. And I remember seeing this, this light pole go by me on the left-hand side. So I know I went on this side of the light pole and I couldn't go on this side because there were railings here. Okay. On the side of the bridge, there were railings. And I, and I ran off. I remember I, I re, it woke me up when I ran off the road. And I, and I think there was, a matter of fact, there was a little bit of a curve coming into this, which made it why I kind of ran off this way. And I ran off, and right after I seen the pole, I don't remember anything until... I'm back on the road up here again. Okay. The truck went down through the swamp, up the other side, out of the swamp, through the bushes, through the mud, through the water, all that, back on the road. Okay. 
But here's the problem. That the tires on the truck didn't get muddy. There was no mud or splashes of, other than just the tires just a little bit dirty, looked like they had been driven down a dirt road. Where I picked, I guess, right in through here is where I got a little dirt on the tires. But it was like this part of the trip from here to here never happened. Yet, I know it did. I went back to the place the next morning and looked and seen where I went off the road right here. And the truck, t the truck uh, tire tracks come along here, you know, and they just... It was like they just stopped. They didn't, I didn't see where the truck went on down into the swamp. It stopped here. And then I woke up when it was like my tires just landed, like I was landing a plane. I woke up when my tires hit the pavement over here. Now, don't that just sound like an absolute fantasy made up lie? But here's the strange thing. It's not. It's the truth. That happened to me. I ran off the road, fell asleep, ran off the road, woke up, seen I was headed into the swamp beside this bridge. And then my memory was wiped all the way to up, went back on the road with nothing wrong. Didn't wreck. Didn't get the truck dirty. What? I mean, this is definitely the most mysterious one out of everything like this that, it, that has happened to me. Because, I mean, you can get in a car wreck at 140 mile an hour and you can maybe make an excuse as to, you know, maybe you just got really, really lucky, you know, and why you didn't get a scratch at a, in an end over end wreck and hitting three or four pine trees. You could maybe make it say, well, it's remotely possible if things just worked out just right, right? Well, how can you explain this one away? How can you remotely run, down, run off the road down through a swamp, come out the other side, back on the road, and not, a, not anything go wrong? Right, that's what I've got too. Silence. I don't have an answer other than other than it's things in my life that has taught me that that our lives have purpose and that we're here for a reason and that it's not our decision as to when we go home or when we leave this place. If we're supposed to stay here, you'll stay here. We all have different roles to play. We may have even chosen them. Who knows? But... It just taught me that it, it, it reconfirmed because, you know, I've had these other events happen to me, you know, and the, the other ones I've told y'all guys about. And I've had other small ones, but none of them compared to these, like these scenarios and these situations as to how can you explain running off the road, going down the hill bank into the swamp, coming out the other side without getting the truck dirty, without wrecking the hell out of the truck or without getting injured or anything. It's just like, you know, it's a miracle. It's like, for whatever reason, Father has chosen to keep me here. And when these kind of things happen to you a number of times over time and it keeps adding up, for myself, I had to ask myself, okay, there's something I'm obviously here to do. And then I would pray and ask Father to show me what it is I'm supposed to do. What is it that I, my job is because I'm still here, because I'm by my own choices and behaviors and things that have happened, I'm not supposed to be here. And I know that. Yet... I am still here. And so you got to ask yourself why. And I know there's others out there that are listening to my voice right now that 
that know exactly what I'm talking about in the exact thing. So, you know, I encourage you to share your stories down below this as to what has happened. And I might be able to come back around and pick up some of those stories um, and feature, feature them in a video um, coming up. Because I'm still going to do a follow-up video on your on your Bigfoot stories. Oh, you haven't seen that video? No, I didn't see a Bigfoot. It's a, it's a story of things that happened. And my question is, is if, if you were me, what would you think? You know, so if you haven't seen that, go back and listen to that. It's on my channel. Um, I'll put a link to it up at the end of this video so you can just click on it if you haven't seen it yet. So, with that being said, I wanted to give y'all guys an update as well on this here. We, on our fundraiser for Bread for My Brother, which is where I'm going to be helping out and documenting and showing y'all guys um, what we're doing of the people that I'm going to help. These are people that I know of. Uh, most of them are actually, none of them are people that I spend daily time with. They're all people. They're not friends or, or family or things like that. I don't spend family. I don't spend time with these people with the one exception is my son. And I'm going to tell you his story. And I pray that y'all guys are okay with me. My son is, just turned 18 not too long ago, and he has autism. And I don't, I'm not, I don't get to see my son and uh, haven't for like 10 years. And it's not by choice. Um, but I'll get into that long story because once I go down that rabbit hole, it'll just be a mess. I just want to give y'all guys an update, let you know that we are doing good. Doing actually, we're doing very good. We've we've uh, managed in seven days, so in one week we've collected. Well, let me refresh this window. I think that's still the right number because I just opened this window. Yeah, so we've uh, collected forty seven hundred thirty six and sixty four cents in seven days. So we're right on target. If the momentum keeps, we're right on target to be able to hit the $20,000. And with $20,000, we truly going to be able to do some things that are going to be really pretty cool for several people. Um, about six or so that I've got in mind. Although it's evolving as I'm dealing with this. Um, meaning like you know, sometimes you think someone would want help and then you find out maybe they don't want help. But I'm not positive of that yet. I'm still feel, figuring it all out without uh, spilling the beans to anybody because I don't want to promise anything to anyone that I can't deliver because we still got a ways to go before we're really going to be able to make a a really solid impact. I mean, yeah, $4,700 is a pretty good little bit for any one of us. But that's like for, you know, any one or two of us. It's really not a life-changing amount of money in any way. But it sure can uh, help someone out of a mud hole if you're in it, you might say. So we got, now we're up to 252 donations. And I'm just going to kind of go a little quicker through here instead of reading them all off like I did the last time. I'm just going to scan down so that uh, that they've been shown on my video because it is appreciated what y'all uh, what y'all guys are doing. So once this, uh, Brian Briggs says it's this has begun like wildfire. Wow, this thing I really, really happening really happening PayPal. Um, I'm assuming he's referring and sending people to this PayPal, which it looks like based on the link. I'm not sure. We're going to check it out and see. I'm going to see where our friend Brian is 
sending people and it's not working that is not working Brian your link is incomplete so I was going to check it out and see if it was a fundraiser for another group that needed some help that looked legitimate if it was I would uh, that would be great okay a few more here Thank y'all guys very much for helping in this uh, because you can imagine if you were one of these people that I'm going to help, most of which have no idea that I'm up to helping them, which I'll be quite frank, it will be told and it will be shown that this that money didn't come from me, it came through me. It reminds me of a video I'm going to do here very soon. Thank you, Sheila. Very soon. Uh, I said this money didn't come through th from me. It came through me. It's kind of how another story I need to tell kind of works for me. I've talked about it a little bit before, but it has to do with, let's say when you're a kid and you fall down, and you hit your head to try to make it not hurt what do you do try to make the pain go away what do you immediately do when you hit your head what does your mama do when you come running to mama mama I hit my head what does she do immediately she puts her hand on it doesn't she mm-hmm Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Ken. Um, she puts her hand on it. Why? Because it makes the pain go away, doesn't it? Well, isn't that an interesting quink -a dink that putting your hand on it makes the pain go away? And someone, some would say, well, that's just uh, because rubbing it makes it feel better. Uh, duh, with your hand. Next time it happens, try rubbing it with your foot or your elbow. See how that feels. There's there's a secret in the hands. There's power in the hands. And I'm going to tell that story very soon. And I'm going to tell you about, about, about a half a dozen or more scenarios where Father led me to allow him to help people through me using my hands it's something I haven't talked about that much and I don't because I would never ever want to be seen as saying it's me or somehow coming across bragging or having some ego about it because I don't matter of fact I'm actually fearful um, of doing something wrong or saying something wrong when it comes to lots of these things, including this fundraiser, you know. I'm hoping I'm catching everybody. And I hope you guys would like to see that video. I would like to tell the story. It's just... All I can say is that hopefully Father leave me to give me the correct words to explain how it is he has worked through me, used me to help some people in different situations. They were maybe where someone has been burned or someone has cancer on their skin and how that process of how that goes away. Or let's say how someone um, has like a problem with their liver and they're, when they go, when they urinate, they, it's really, really, really dark and they've been told that, you know, it's not good and this ain't going to work out very long term, very good. And father decides to encourage me to work with that person and to work through me 
And then they wake up the next morning, look out the window, and they come to me crying and say they've seen an angel standing in the clouds looking at them. And their problem with their liver went away. Yeah, stories like that. Um, maybe another story. I'll go into much more detail in the actual video. How about someone that's close to me gets in an auto accident and they are hit their head really hard and they're virtually paralyzed on their left side. And Father worked through me and corrected it in mere seconds. Yep. And I'll tell you, I'm going to tell all those stories here real soon because I think they're, they certainly impressed me. So I think uh, that it could have a positive impression on other people as well. We all need to hear good things in these times of uh, lots of fear propaganda and threats and all these things that we're, we've, we're all seeing out there. And what I would encourage you to do is to look out the window and look up and realize that not much has changed. It's mostly all propaganda and fear tactics. As long as you don't listen to them and do anything that they encourage you to do. You know, thank you, Shannon. And thank you, Laura. So, guys, I'm going to let you go for now. I just uh, wanted to ramble on just a few more minutes why I showed a, little, a bit more of these uh, names and stuff here. In general, people, the way the Bible talks about charity is, is that you're not supposed to do it and look for recognition. Um, so that's typically why I don't mention everyone that donates anything to my work is because if I spend too much time appreciating and patting that person on the back, it can take away the reward that they would otherwise get for this from someone that it really counts from, which ain't me. Okay. So that may help you understand a little bit, a little bit better. And once again, my voice is starting to get just a little bit raspy here. I'm starting to sound like uh, I'm 142 years old. Starting to. All right, I think I've made it all the way down far enough for now. I love you guys. If you're able to contribute to this uh, fundraiser, uh, please do. And please know that you can be anonymous. And if you only want to donate say $3, that is fine. $3 is not uh, too small of a, of a gift. You don't need to be given too much anyways. Don't do things that's unreasonable. You understand? You know, it, it, this isn't that kind of a fundraiser, you know. I love you guys. You have a wonderful day. And remember that Father loves you. He watches out for all of us. At all times, at all moments, he's right there. Just talk to him every once in a while. It only takes a minute.